All right, today we're looking at paragraph 51, which concerns uh, Jesus' authority over the Sabbath through the healing of the man with, 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 with the withered hand. Matthew 12, 9 to 14, Mark 3, 1 to 6, and Luke 6, 6 to 11. Question number 222. What does Luke add about what Jesus was doing in the synagogue? Stephen? 220. That's 220? That's right, 220. Oh, 50. Okay, I went ahead one. Okay, we're starting with paragraph 50. Is that right? Okay, sorry about that. I skipped one. Uh, so this is through the contra Jesus' uh, authority over the Sabbath, through the controversy over grain. Matthew 12, 1 to 8, Mark 2, 23 to 28, and Luke 6, 1 to 5. All right, so this is where Jesus and the disciples are going through the grain fields. And uh, the disciples are hungry, and so they begin to pluck uh, grain to eat. Um, so, uh, number 220 then is what detail does Matthew add about the disciples? They were hungry. They were hungry, yes. Some of you can uh, identify with that. How many of you are hungry right now? Almost all of you. How many of you ate breakfast this morning? Same ones. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> What? How many of you are always hungry? Okay, few. Now, uh, I want to give you a little information about why the Pharisees found this so egregious. Uh, the disciples breached Phariseeism in four points. First of all, in plucking the grain from the stalks, they were guilty of what? Do you think? In taking grain from the stalks, what would that be called? Well, yes, but doing what? Harvesting. Harvesting or reaping. Yeah, reaping. Uh, you can say harvesting as well. I think that's synonymous. Uh, number two, when they rub the grain in their hands to separate the wheat from the chaff. You understand? Everyone understand chaff? Any question about that? Morgan, you look like you have a question. Do you understand? You know what chaff is? Okay. You don't know what chaff is? What's chaff? All right, Morgan, tell them what chaff is. Isn't it the stuff that's laying on top of the wheat? The things? It's like the outward. Yeah. The outward, I want to say, the outward uh, covering that's really light and flimsy, and you you just take it off. Like if you have uh, uh, peanuts, sometimes you get peanuts that've got the little, if you get red peanuts, they've got the little flimsy um, covering to it, and you just take that off because you don't want to eat that. And it's light. And so when, when you... Uh, um, when you do that, that's called, when you, you take the, the wheat, move, remove the wheat from the chaff, that's called what? Anybody have an idea? Emma? Threshing, right, good. That's threshing. And, and number three would be the next process if you were farming, and that would be when they blew in their hands to rid themselves of the chaff, blow the chaff away because it's lighter, than the seed, they were guilty of. Anybody know what the word for that is? Winnowing. Winnowing. W i n n o w. I n g. W i n n o w i n g. Winnowing. Now, maybe you've seen a picture of this. Um, oftentimes, in uh, ancient times, certain <laughs> many places in the world, if they're winnowing, what they would do is they'd take a, a winnowing fork. And it looks kind of like a pitchfork. And they would dig into the, the pile of seeds they had there and throw it up in the air. And if it was a little bit of a windy day, the wind would blow away the lighter chaff, and then the seeds would fall down. And you do that enough, and pretty soon you've got a pile of seeds there, and the chaff is gone. Does that make sense? So, so in, in the disciples blowing the chaff away, the Pharisees said they were guilty of winnowing, <coughs> which is work. Number four, when they ate the kernels, they were actually guilty because they were putting it into their bodies, yeah. and it would remain in their bodies for a while. Preparing a meal. Uh, you could say they were prepare, preparing a meal, uh, but actually what the Pharisees said is they were guilty of storing. 
they're guilty of storing food because they're putting it in their body where it's stored for a while. <laughs> now, does that all sound pretty silly? But that that is the way the, uh, the Pharisees operated. So when it says that they were upset with the disciples and what they were doing, now you understand a little bit of the reason why. Any questions? Uh, Jesus brings up an issue with them <laughs> that um, probably struck at them uh, too. Uh, he's and he brings up uh, what event? Uh, to what event does Jesus compare number two twenty one to the disciples picking and eating grain? To what event? Kayla. Right, the bread of the presence, or sometimes called the show bread, in the tabernacle. And uh, I don't know if any of you looked up, but back, back when David was on the run from Saul, uh, there was an occasion when uh, he and his men needed food, and they went into the tabernacle and ate the bread that was there for the priests. Now that would that would seem to be a violation of the purpose of that bread, but in reality. Um, if you look at the, his six point, Jesus' six-point defense here uh, that follows this um, in his historic appeal to David, that the first point under that is that the Mosaic Law never limited the eating of showbread or the bread of the presence to the priests. But the Pharisaic Law did. So God's Law never said only priests can eat the showbread. But the Pharisees said only priests can eat the showbread. So in bringing up David, what is Jesus doing? He's bringing up one of their heroes who apparently broke one of their rules. Because B, David was the hero of the Pharisees. So now you see what kind of spot they're in now? Do they defend their hero? <laughs> or do they admit that they're wrong about the rules they made up? So the first point of Jesus is the historical appeal to David. The second point <laughs> is his appeal to the law above the temple service or ministry. Appeal to the law above the temple service. In other words, he's, uh, he's appealing to what the law said and what the law permitted. And in reality, priests do their work primarily on the Sabbath. You know, so priests are working on the Sabbath, and so uh, how can you criticize someone for eating some grain? You're, you're making up rules that don't fit what the law actually says. <clears throat> Number three, the person of Messiah is greater than the Sabbath. Hosea 6.6 6 says that works of necessity and mercy are permitted on the Sabbath. And, uh, you know, if you're hungry, uh, that becomes a necessity, doesn't it? And uh, Messiah is there, so he is, he is certainly greater than the Sabbath. Uh, four, the person of Messiah is greater than the temple. Four, the person of Messiah is greater than the temple. Number five, the purpose of the Sabbath was to help man, help man not to bind him. The Pharisees passed over 1,500 laws concerning what is and is not permitted on the Sabbath, making man subservient to the Sabbath rather than the other way around. So man is there to serve whatever they said was to be done or not to be done on the Sabbath. The sixth point Jesus makes is that since the Son of Man is Lord, which means he has authority, he's Lord of the Sabbath, he can do whatever he wishes. <clears throat> so let's take a closer look at Mark 2, 27 and 28. Where Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. When he says the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, what does he mean? <clears throat> You've answered the question there, but what, it, what does he actually mean here, in your own words? <clears throat> that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. 
What's he mean when he says the <coughs> Sabbath was made for man? Do it little by little. What does that mean? Noel? But the Sabbath was made so that man would be like a rest day. Exactly. That's what the Sabbath was, right? A day of rest. And so God initiated that because he knows, since he made man, that man needs to rest periodically. You know, there have been times in history when uh, you know, governments have tried to change from a seven-day week to things like a ten-day week, and they found it didn't work. People got too tired. <laughs> they needed to rest more often than every ten days. And if you don't have a day of rest every seven days, every week, you're going to find yourself wearing down too. Uh, so it's important that we have that day of rest. So the Sabbath was made for man. And then what's he mean when he says not man for the Sabbath? Brennan? Man's not supposed to work to try and keep the Sabbath. Yeah. It wasn't made to be some kind of uh, back-breaking rules that you had to follow. It wasn't supposed to be laborious and tedious and, and cumbersome and, and something which is, is thought as, you know, i got to avoid that. You know, I, you know, I hate the Sabbath because all the stuff I can't do. You know, it wasn't made to be that. It was made to be a time of just relaxation and rest. <clears throat> and then finally he says, so in, in a sense, <clears throat> man is in control of the Sabbath in, in, from the standpoint that um, he determines what rest he needs and so on. Now, he, there were rules given about not working, that is, not working your job. That's what it's talking about there. Uh, not working at your job, that you take a day off from that. Uh, but Jesus is pointing out that man really is uh, in control of the Sabbath and the Sabbath was made for him. And then he goes on to make a further point and that uh, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. So if man is basically in charge of the Sabbath and what he does, the Son of Man, who is the Messiah, is definitely in charge. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. I right. But why do they call him the Son of Man? That's a, an Old Testament term used for the Messiah. Uh, primarily Daniel, you find it there. Uh, Jesus uses it not only as a messianic term, because they, they would have understood Son of Man as being a, a term for the Messiah, but also in emphasizing his humanity. So there are other times in other, in other Gospels where he's called the Son of God, uh, but uh, he, the, the term he uses for himself most often is Son of Man. But why would he be called Son of Man if he's only created at all? Uh, because he, he is in human flesh, too. So he is identifying with humanity. Okay. That's a good question. I probably books have been written just on that. <laughs> We're just scratching the surface. Any other questions? All right. Now we go to paragraph 51. The healing of the man with the withered hand. Matthew 12, 9 to 14. Mark 3, 1 to 6. And Luke 6. 6 to 11. So Jesus goes in to a synagogue then. And of course it's still the same day. It's still the Sabbath day. And uh, so he goes in there and uh, the issue comes up about uh, what you're allowed to do on the Sabbath. So question number 222. What does Luke add about what Jesus was doing in the synagogue? Noah? He was teaching. Right. Teaching. Number 223, what does Luke add about the man's withered hand? Jordan? His right hand. His right hand. Yeah. Now, what? Why would Luke think that that's important? What do you know about Luke that might make him think he'd be observant of that? Yeah, so he would notice things like that, would he? Think it was important to put down which hand it was. Number 224, what does Matthew... <clears throat> add about the Pharisees who were present at the synagogue. What does Matthew tell us? Nate? That they conspired against him. Um, does it say that in the others? No, I'm not sure whether um, that is right or not. Uh, let's see.
Well, that's in, uh, see, Matthew says that they conspired against him. Okay, so that, that is mentioned there, okay. Anybody have something else? They asked him a question. Yeah, they asked him a question. A lot of questions in the Gospels, aren't there? That he had, they asked him a question. Anybody put down what question they asked him? Yeah. Right. Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? So they asked him uh, this question, trying to draw him into a controversy. All right, so either one of those answers will be okay. Any question? All right, number 25, why did they do this? Why did they do this? Marissa? Because they didn't like that Jesus was not their laws. Okay, they didn't like that, he was, that Jesus wasn't following their laws. Okay, what? I think it tells us exactly why why they did this. Griff, do you have this? I had they don't like Jesus. Okay, <laughs> is that a guess? Okay, so... We want to find out what the text says, not necessarily what comes out of the brain of any one of you in particular. So what does the text say, Mia? To accuse him. To accuse him so that they might accuse him is the answer to that. Number 226, the illustration of what possession does Jesus use to show the Pharisees that they do acts of kindness on the Sabbath? Landon? Um, I have a sheep who falls into a pit. Right. Sheep. So if you if you got a sheep that falls in a pit, you rescue <laughs> him. So why are you getting all out of, been out of shape? Because I heal somebody. You do, you do acts of kindness on the Sabbath. So sheep is the answer. Any question? 227. What does Mark indicate about the Pharisees' reaction to Jesus' question? Griff. They were silent. That is correct. They were silent. They had no response. <clears throat> Why? Not for the same reason you're silent right now. Why were they silent? Stubborn hearts. <laughs> yeah, that's part of it. But mostly that Jesus was right. They, if somebody says something that's right and you don't have any response, yeah, because because you know they're right. You don't have anything to say, and uh, they're too stubborn to admit it. That's true. <clears throat> uh, number two twenty-eight. How did Jesus respond to this reaction when he saw that they were, as John said, being stubborn, being silent? How did he respond to that? Healing. What do you have? He looked at them with anger. Right. Actually, two things there. Anybody have the second part? He looked at them with anger. What else? Yeah. What does it mean to grieve? Is that a word that you guys know? Anybody know what it means to grieve? Nobody? No. That's what people do uh, sometimes at a funeral. This idea of mourning, grieving, feeling very badly. So what's it tell us here? Jesus is angry with them, but he's also feels feels very sad about how hard their hearts were. Yes, Brent. Is it okay if I only say grief and not as well? Yes, either one of those would be fine, but we uh, to be clear, we should have both those reactions uh, looked at with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart. That either one of those is okay. Number 229, what do all three Gospels indicate that Jesus said to the man? All three say what? Griff. Stretch out your hand. Right. Stretch out your hand. <clears throat> Number 230, <coughs> Are all, three, all three Gospels relate that a conspiracy was initiated, but Mark indicates the participants. Who are the participants in this conspiracy against Jesus? Jordan. The Pharisees and the Herodians. Right, the Pharisees and the Herodians. Do you remember last year we talked about the Pharisees and the Herodians? They cooperated before uh, when we uh, were studying Mark chapter, the last part of chapter 11 and chapter 12. Remember we did our Bible study chart? 
Do you remember what would be unusual about Pharisees and Herodians cooperating in anything? They didn't like each other. They didn't like each other. Why? Because one supported the Romans, the Herodians did. Yep, the Herodians supported the Romans, and how did the Pharisees? What did the Pharisees think about the Romans? Can we be a little stronger than they just didn't like them? They smell so bad, they don't use the odor. Uh, what, what was it? What they didn't despised. they like? What? They despised them. They felt that they were what was causing impurity in the land of Israel. Uh, so these are on opposite sides. This is like extreme Republicans and extreme Democrats getting together and fighting for the same thing. And the thing that brings them together is Jesus. As I've said before, Jesus brings all kinds of people together. Not always for the good. All right. That finishes paragraph 51. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Did we do? Oh, we did. You did uh, some work on, on 52 already. So let me have uh, the map that you did and the W question sheet. So let me have those. Make sure your name's on them. Give those uh, to me. Pass them. Stack, pass them towards Griff, and he's going to put them on this empty desk right here. And then let's look at the chart. Is yours complete, Stephen? How about you? Okay, now see this. This makes it easy to find anything, to look at it, to see what's there. That's why I gave it to you in a chart, because it's easier to put things together. <clears throat> Is that the whole thing? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Sam, you didn't have or you only a part of it? I didn't have it. No, did you have the whole thing? Yeah. Stephen, did you have the whole thing? No, I didn't think so. You got part of it. Yeah. All right, let's talk what goes talk about what goes in the chart. Uh, comparing Sections 48 through 52. All right, what was the issue or the controversy in section 48? What do you have for that, Marissa? The disciples of John didn't know why Jesus was doing Okay, what did you do in the chart? I don't know. All right, was that hard to fit all that in? <laughs> the thing about a chart is we want to try to condense it to as few words as possible. 
All right, so Marissa gave us the whole thing. Anybody have a uh, shorter number of words? Jordan, what do you have? Not fasting. Not fasting. Okay, how many had something like that? Okay, any, any others? Luke? Traditions. Yeah, essentially they're talking about not just fasting, but following traditions as well. Uh, anybody else? All right, we're not going to grade this, so if you don't have this filled in, you can fill it in. Uh, so I have traditions or not fasting would also be legitimate. Okay, so uh, then we go to section 49. What was the issue there? Emma, what do you have? Um, healing a man on the Sabbath. Okay, healing a man on the Sabbath. Anybody else? And he claimed to be equal to God. Okay, Con um, part of the controversy was equality with God. Did you have working on the Sabbath too? Because that's really the thing that yeah. starts it all. I carry on. Is this issue for 49? The issue for section 49. Carrying on the Sabbath. Okay, carrying the bed. Um, all that comes back to work on the Sabbath. That's really the issue. If, you, if we kind of make it more of a general description, work on the Sabbath. <coughs> Any question? All right, then what's the issue in section 50? Uh, Kayla, what do you have for that? Jesus' disciples did work on the Sabbath. Okay, so again, it's work on the Sabbath. That's what I want you to see, that, mm -hmm. that, that even though there's some difference in the details, that uh, the main idea here is going to be the same. So you can say preparing food or disciples working, but work on the Sabbath is, again, the, the main issue. Any question? <clears throat> All right, and then section 51. What's the issue there? Haley, what do you have for that? Healing on the Sabbath, which is, again, work. So work on the Sabbath. It's there, too. Okay, then what's the issue in section 52? I'll take a volunteer on this one. There is no. There isn't. Good job, Zach. <coughs> you should have had none, or there is none, or something like that. Any question? Yeah, Brennan? Hey, never mind. I was going to get off of What? Never mind. I was looking at 51. Oh. Okay, so those are the issues. So we see we go from traditions to a specific tradition, and that is working on the Sabbath for three straight sections, and then there is no issue. All right, so the antagonist then. <coughs> um, maybe I should have. Did you understand what I meant by antagonist? Yeah. You've used that word in English, right? Yeah. All right, so who are the antagonists in section 48? Uh, let's see. We have heard from everybody. Uh, all right, let's go with Zach. Disciples of John. Pardon me? Disciples of John. Right. Uh, John's disciples. Uh, you could have, I think people were involved there too, but mostly it's John's disciples. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. All right, then who are the antagonists in section 49? Uh, Nate. Um, uh, Stephen. Uh, in 49, I don't think it calls them Pharisees, does it? Anybody else have Pharisees? Jordan, you have Pharisees? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was well, there anybody else involved? Because I have Jewish leaders. Huh? Yeah, is that what it says? Jewish leaders? Yeah. The Jews, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, when, uh, that's usually a designation of the leadership. Would it be okay if I said Sanhedrin? Yeah, that, yeah, that's probably who's involved there. We don't know absolute certainty, but probably. <clears throat> All right, in uh, section 50, who are the antagonists? John? Pharisees? Pharisees. How many had Pharisees? All right, good. That's who it is there. And then in section 51, who are the antagonists? Haley? In 51. Pharisees. Also. Any question? And then in section 52, Lexi? Um, unclean spirits or demons? Yeah. 
Okay, we'll complete the uh, chart next time, and then we'll do section 53 together as well.